Hi, Dyslexic Genius here. What I'm going to talk about is an Amarola A1 motor, and I'm going to do a string of videos of doing this, even putting it into the machine. But we're going to start with a motor chassis. And I'm doing, my customer asked me to do one step up for him, and I said, I'll be happy to do this. And what that means is I do a little bit of bluing and a lot of other detail work I'm going to show you that you can do at home. I matched the gold paint because they originally painted gold. Even the spring barrels were painted gold. And all the screws here that I have in place, all these here, these are a 640. So I take a 640 tap out. We'll take the screw out. And I put it in my tap holder. And what you're going to do is you're going to go by and you're going to run the tap through here and that's going to clean the threads out on the inside if the factory has made a mistake or somebody just jammed a screw down there and cross threaded it and this will fix that problem and you have to go all the way down into the hole so you got to screw this all the way Till you feel it just hit the bottom of the hole. There we go. And I did that with every screw hole. And why am I going to all this work? Because when you're done and you assemble, this should screw in all the way down with your fingers. You shouldn't feel any tightness. And then I've blued them all like this. I've blued all the screws and everything else that goes to the machine like this. I've re-blued it to make it look a lot better. Because 100 years from now, these little details, a lot of this you're not going to see at all. It's going to be in the motor assembled. But somebody's going to take this, this A1 apart in 100 years and go, oh, maybe I ought to redo the spring barrels. Maybe I ought to repack this. And these are just little nice details that make it look a lot more aesthetically pleasing. So these screws are a 640. Then you come around to the screw here on the back side, and this little screw holds the tensioner pulley. And I tap that out, and that's a 440 tap. The lasso is a, oh, the 640, lasso is a 640. This is, and this 440. is a 440. So the belt tensioner screw that holds the belt tensioner in place, and then we have a spring that fits in that little hole, that's a 440. Now we've done all that tapping on the chassis. We have the speed control that goes in here. And the speed control is a 1024. And how did you determine what size those were? I have, I have a gauge that tells me the thread size of things like this that I made up. But now I'm telling you online that all the screws on the top end are a 640. The belt tensioner screws a 440. And the speed control is a 1024. How can people at home figure out what size those are? All you got to do is watch the video or... You make these up. I made this for all the small increment screws that you run into on a phonograph. But I'm always trying to tell people what the screw size is. So this was a six, this is the 640. This is a regular stainless steel one. I ran it in, up and down, checked everything. And you can do this online. There's paperwork that tells you what, you know, a 640 is. If you have to drill the hole, it tells you the drill size to do all the tapping. And I've gone through and I've blued all these parts. Now what we have to do is go, okay. Little things like this. I blued this bolt. Really, it's a bolt. And it fits right in here on the spring barrel. And you'd unscrew this and then you'd inject more 
grease in, into the spring to re-grease it. That's what this is for. So when you look at this one, you can see I have the knurling looks, I've cleaned all the knurling out like this before bluing. And then I polished this all out, then I re-blued it. This is a half inch 20 nut to a half inch 20 bolt. So I can hold it when I polish out on my deburring tool. So when you take this out and you put it into the spring barrel, here, it's going to look very nice. But when you get the old one next to the gold, you can see that we have a burr here. Somebody manhandled this screw and it, the screwdriver popped out. So I'm going to take this all apart and clean it up. Now, the knurling is this rough stuff on the outside. That's what it's called, it's knurling. When you look at this one, you see that shiny piece right here? That like it's scraped off the knurling and you go 160 degrees. Somebody put a wrench on it. Now, how do we make, we clean out the knurling like this? What I do in prepping for bluing on this is I just put a wire brush on and I come in here and I clean off all the knurling. I clean it out with this wire brush. And that day, because these are all like little pyramids. Knurling is just a bunch of little pyramids sticking up. And you have to get all the crud out of there. And this makes it very easy. Then I will re-blue this one. But this is the difference. You put that, are you going to put that back into the motor? Or are you going to put this back into the motor? You're going to put this one back in. Because that looks better after you're done. Because you've repainted the spring barrel. Now, we get to the gear on the spring barrel. You have this gear, and all this is painted, but this piece here isn't painted, and the side of the gear is not painted. So how do we repaint this? It's very easy. All you do is lay some blue painter's tape on, and now I'm going to show you how to get that circle in the painter's tape. Instead of using a razor blade, I go old school, like in the 50s, your dad probably had to put a new water pump in the car, so they bought a water pump and they didn't make gaskets for it. So you bought this gasket material and you knocked out your own gasket. So we're going to put a little painter's tape on here and we're going to cover everything up and then we're going to beat on it. So you're going to take that and you're going to round out the edge. like this. You see, now you see what the tape is. Now what you do, you take a little ball peen hammer, and you beat this out and you could press down like this. Darling, why couldn't I come in with my fingernail and just scrape it? You could. I mean, that's a lot easier than trying to... What you're going to do is watch. See how that gives you this clean edge? Yes. Now, after you have that clean edge, you're like this. Mm -hmm. It protects it. Now what you're going to do is you just spray it, the gold in both sides, and don't worry about this part of the gear. This part of the gear is shiny. So after it's done, you're going to take a 5 inch, 5 eighths expandable collet. That's what this is. You screw this in and all four sides expand out. So you will take that and it has an Allen wrench. You'll stick this in. 
you'll tighten this up. You'll put it in your drill, and when you, then you'll take 400 steel, sandpaper, and while it's running, it will just take off all the old paint. Aren't you uh, going to get paint in the teeth? You'll get paint in the teeth. Then you have this little chamfer, right, on the gears. We have this little chamfer. They cut in this way here just to cut it off. And then when you're done, zoop, I sand out. And I'll show you when it's done. But the other thing is on the gear, you see that right here, this hole in the gear? There was a bubble in the casting and it broke out. It hasn't broken the tooth and the tooth is in still in really good condition. So we can do it. If you look closely, if I move it like this, you can see the roughness of the top of the gears when they were machining it. It shouldn't be there, but it'll be fine. Okay, if you get overspray in the gear teeth. After we get overspray in the gear teeth, like this, I'm going to come in with this, and I'm going to have a brass one instead of a steel one. And that will just, you'll just take it, And run it down here. The brass is softer than the, the cast iron, and it'll just take all the paint off, just zoop, and you'll be done. And it'll look just fine. I'll show you in the next video what this looks like when it's done. It takes a lot of work. Just bluing right now has been about two and a half hours of work. But I'm going to show you what you can really do if you have what get into detail work on the motors and make them look pretty. And that's my tip for the day.